all. Praise the Lord. Good to have everybody in the house of the Lord this morning. Um, if you have your Bibles, I'm going to invite you to turn to Genesis chapter 1, and, and I'm going to read a lot of chapter 1, so we'll just start right at the beginning of chapter 1, and there's a couple things that, you know, I feel like God showed me and dealt with me, and uh, some of this he showed me via Pastor Harold Hoffman, uh, who's one of the most incredible Bible teachers I've ever had the privilege to meet or to listen to. He's just um, incredibly anointed in his teaching. And anyway, um, here's some things that the Lord was dealing with me about this week. The Bible says, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth, and the earth was without form, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God divided the light from, uh, from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Notice the word first day there. And then as we go on, the Bible says this, And God said, Let there be firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. So basically, he separated the waters by dry land, and it was underneath the heaven is, is what the Bible is saying. And he goes on in verse 8, and it says, And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. Um, the Bible goes through great pains to show us what day it is. And then uh, the Lord said, uh, Let the waters be gathered together under their place, and let the dry land appear. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters. Uh, they were seas, and God saw that it was good. And God said, uh, let the earth bring forth grass and herb, yielding seed, and fruit trees, yielding after his kind, whose seed is of itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth the grass, and the herb yielded seed after its kind, and the tree yielded yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after its kind, and God saw that it was good. And again, the evening and the morning were the third day, and God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven uh, to divide the day from the night, and let them, be, let them be for signs, and let them be for seasons, and for days, and for years. And, and then he goes on and he talks about the, the light at night, and the light uh, during the day, and, and that the light at night the moon would have rule and the sun would have rule over the light during the day and and then verse 19 it says in the evening and the morning were the fourth day and God said let the waters bring abundantly um, the moving creature that hath life and fowl that may fly above the earth and open the firmament uh, and uh, sorry uh, above the earth in the open uh, firmament of heaven flying in the sky let's just say that and God created great whales and every living creature that moveth which uh, the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind and every winged fowl after its kind and God saw that it was good and God blessed them saying be fruitful and multiply fill the waters and the seas and let the fowl multiply in the earth in the evening and the morning were the fifth day and then God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures after its kind and creeping things and the beasts of the earth after its kind. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth after its kind and the cattle after its kind and everything that creepeth upon the earth after its kind. And God saw that it was good. And then verse 26, and God said, let us, let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the, over the fish and over the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth on the earth. So God created man in his own image, the image of God, created he him, male 
and female created he them. Now just take your Bibles and put them down and let's just lift our voice. Let's just lift our hands unto the Lord. Lord Jesus, I worship you. I magnify you. Lord, I, I declare your glory. I declare your glory in this place. I declare your glory in your word. I declare, Lord, that, that you are the mighty God. You are the mighty God. I declare, Lord, that you are the everlasting Father, that you are the great I Am, and, and that, Lord, your kingship, your authority, Lord, you don't know any and you don't know any beginning, Lord, that you are the eternal I am. And Lord, in this house today, we worship you. We worship you. We worship you today. Now let's clap our hands to the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank the Lord. God bless you. You can be seated. Uh, I'm going to do my best not to make a dog's breakfast out of this whole thing uh, today. But there was something... There's something incredible about what we read, and, and I think a lot of times we read about the Lord said, let there be, and and there was, and, and we read about the power, the authority of God, and I I, I think that sometimes we kind of gloss over um, the glory of God that was established at creation, the glory of God, probably established isn't the right word, but the glory of God that he's shown at creation. Now, uh, none of us, even the oldest of us in this house, and we could start to point fingers, we weren't, that person wasn't there at the beginning of creation. But the Lord tells us this really incredible story. Um, we have the story of the Lord saying, let there be. But when God, now this is something Brother Hoffman shared, and, and this really kind of opened my eyes to some understanding. When, the Lord didn't say, let there be a mosquito. He didn't say, let there be geraniums. He didn't say that. But it said, God said, let the earth bring forth grass. He, he, spoke, to, he spoke to the substance from which it was coming. He, he spoke to the nature of the thing that was being formed, the nature of the thing that was being created. So he spoke to the earth and he said, you bring forth grass. Now, now I will tell you, that this has really kind of caught my attention over the last, I don't know, let's say year or whatever, that when the Lord said, let there be, like, let there be light, let, let there be uh, firmament, whatever he said, let there be, originally there was nothing. It was just, there, there was nothing in the universe, and the Lord said, let there be, and the supernatural had to bring forth into the natural that which God commanded, okay? And so suddenly we see stars. Uh, uh, suddenly the universe is full of stuff because God said, let there be. And so that same dynamic, he commanded the earth. He, he said, I know that you're barren. I, I know that it's water and I know that it's dry land and I know that it's the expanse of heaven above. But let me just say this, earth, you bring forth right now the herbs and you bring forth the plants and suddenly the earth yields to the desire and to the will of God and bang uh, we find frogs and grasshoppers and, and everything that, that you can think of on the earth or, or I should say this the green grasses the fruits and all of those things and, and so God called on the nature of the thing that was to be made to make it um, and then we go on and we find that the Lord spoke to the waters and if you read the story, God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creatures, the life and the fowl. So apparently the birds were created by in and through the water. The Lord said, water, you bring forth a pigeon right now. And, and pigeons were created and seagulls were created. And I'm just saying, this is, this is the way it reads, that God spoke to the nature of those creatures and every, every fish, every whale, and we read it, uh, that that he told the waters to bring forth abundantly the moving creatures and have life and the fowl that they may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, uh, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind and every winged fowl and his, uh, after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And, and so he speaks to the water and he said, all right, water, you bring forth the fish. 
He didn't say bring forth a trout, bring forth a, 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 a whatever, a, a northern pike, bring forth a muskie. He said water bring forth the fish and bang, the water uh, out of uh, really just out of its own abundance had to bring forth what the master commanded that it was produced. He spoke to the, to the nature, to the beginning of that thing and, and said bring it forth. And, and then he turned, uh, he turned um, back to... Uh, back to uh, the earth. And he said, let the earth bring forth living creatures after its kind, cattle and creeping things, beasts uh, of the earth after its kind. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth after his kind and the cattle after their kind and everything that creepeth upon the earth after its kind came out of the earth. He called upon the nature of the earth. So, so you have to understand that everything that's created is created by its nature. Okay, it's nature, whether it's earth or whether it's water. But then you get to verse 26, and there's an incredible thing that happens here. God said this. He said, let us make man in our image. God called upon himself. He, he called upon himself to make man. So when you see that, let us make man in our own image, that's God saying, I'm talking to myself, and I'm going to bring forth a man upon this earth. I, I think it's so amazing and so interesting that when you look at all the things that God spoke to, He spoke to the heavens, He spoke to the earth, He spoke to the waters, and commanded them to bring forth the things of that nature. But when it came to man, He said, I'm going to keep my own counsel, and man's going to be made after the nature of Jesus Christ because I'm calling upon myself and that man is going to be so special. That man, he's going to live in the temporal. He's going to have a fleshly body. But he said this, I'm going to make man in my own image. What, where did that statement come from? Well, it's simple. He was already looking down through the tunnels of time. He already knew man was going to screw it up in the garden. He already knew a Savior was going to have to come and that Jesus was coming back to the, or coming to this earth. God manifested in, in the flesh flesh. And he said, I'm going to make man look like that one that I'm coming back in. He's going to be made in my nature, in my image. But not only that, when I come back, it's going to be the Spirit of God robed in flesh. And so he said, man is going to be a living spirit. There is going to be an eternal spirit in mankind. I, I will tell you something. I've never been so excited about reading about the making of mankind when I realized that God called upon himself to make me that God said to himself, I'm going to make him in my image. And I'll tell you something, that ought to excite you, that you are made when God took counsel of himself and said, I will make him by my nature. Why don't you clap your hands to the Lord this morning? Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Glory to the Lord. Thank the Lord. But there's something else, and this is amazing to me. And we read all through chapter 1 that there's another creation that happens in chapter 1. And it starts in verse 5. It says, in the evening and the morning were the first day. This is the first appearance in history of time. Never before is time recorded until you get to the creation. And, and the Lord says this. He said, I'm going to make something and I'm going to put it in a place called time. Time, and we, as we go through this and we, we read it, you know, the evening and the morning were the second day. The evening and the morning were the third day and then he talks about the reason for time verse 14 and God said let there be lights in the firmament of heaven to divide the day from night and let them be for signs and for seasons for days and for years so clearly we understand days we understand years we understand seasons but he also said it's for signs now, I think it's remarkable that the Lord has always said, 
he, he has always worked through signs, signs in the heaven above and signs in the earth beneath. I, I'll tell you, you want to study out, you, you pick something. You study out honeybees. They, they've all of a sudden gone missing. You study out earthquakes. They have just exponentially become more and more ever since we have started looking at the frequency and, and the violence of earthquakes. It, the earth is literally shaking under the weight and the presence of God Almighty. Uh, uh, there are signs in the skies if you followed the blood moons, if you followed the lunar eclipses, the solar eclipses, there are signs in the heaven above and there are signs in the earth beneath. And God has always said through time, in time, he was going to communicate by signs. But, but time is something that eternity does not understand. Time is something uh, when you look at and, and you understand what happened with Lucifer. He sinned, and as far as I can tell, he tried to inflict his own will in heaven. He tried to have his own way, and I will tell you, in the kingdom of heaven, there's only one will, and that's the will of God Almighty. There's only one way, that's the way of God Almighty. And it appears that Lucifer tried to have his own way, and when you tried to have your own way instead of God's way, apparently it's disastrous, and it seems like it might be instantaneous that Lucifer fell. But in time, in time, God said, I'm going to place this man in time, and he's going to be a spiritual being, and he's going to be made after the nature of God. He's going to have his own spirit. He's going to be robed in flesh like I'm going to be, but he's going to hear my voice, and I'm going to give him time so that when he screws things up and he messes things up that he can turn to God and he can repent he can make things right he can get them under the blood but uh, but here's kind of what I've come to say today th that all of this time that we've had from the beginning and all of the time that we've had till this very present moment I, I will tell you that that time is fleeting away I thank uh, uh, thank God for the invention of, of VCRs and tape recorders and and then CDs and now digital devices and we can pause and we can rewind and we can even fast forward and I will tell you there have been times in my life where I wanted to hit a fast forward button I remember 30 days before I was getting out of the Marine Corps I was ready it's like let's fast forward this but no time doesn't work like that time runs at a constant and consistent pace it doesn't change it doesn't alter there's 24 hours in a day and you're not going to shortcut those 24 hours that time is going to march at a very specific time there are times in our life where we look and, and we say if i could just do that over again if i could just rewind if i could just allow this change to come but i'll tell you something time is consistent and god said i'm putting man in time and in that time you've got time to get it right and you've got time to find God and you've got time to repent and you've got time to be covered in the blood and you've got time to seek the spirit of God but I'm telling you right now today that that time is coming to an end I'm telling you now that that moment in time is going to run out. That those minutes and those hours and those days are becoming short and they are so shortened that I think humanity has no concept of where they are standing. Humanity does not realize the day and the hour and the place in which we are standing. I will tell you that we think because we haven't seen judgment in our time that we think that judgment's not coming. Because we haven't seen God come and, and speak righteousness into the earth in our time, that somehow God has forgotten or time is on our side. But I tell you, that time is coming to an end. I, I got a call this week, and, and it was an interesting call. A, a man that called me, he was... He's a, a, a friend of mine, and he speaks with the voice of God. And he said this, he said, Brother, he said, I'm just telling you now, I believe and I feel that we are standing at the end of time. And if humanity could see where they stood, it would shock them. It, they would be on their knees before God. I, I will tell you one thing about time that is so interesting. You can't see it. You can't see it. You can only perceive it. And I will tell you that as we look at our watch, we can't understand that in the next minute we could be dead. I've talked to many people and I've said this and I was talking with Michael this morning and we talked about our rights and the rights we have, and I, as far as I can tell, biblically speaking, that God creates us and God forms us in our mother's womb. And from the point we are 
the, from the point that we are born, that the only right that I can find for humanity in the Bible is we have the right to die at the time, place, and manner of God's choosing. That's the only right that I can come up with. I, I hear so often my God-given rights, my right to this, my right to that. I'll tell you, as far as I can tell, we've got the right to die and there's not another right. And when time runs out, that place where you stand with God, you have chosen it, you have picked it, you have decided where and how you're going to stand with God. And I will tell you today, I feel an urgency to tell you that time is running out and your days are short and they are numbered, but there is a place where you can get it right with God. That's at an altar of repentance. That's at a place where your sins are washed away. That's at a place where God fills you with His Spirit. I will tell you, time is not on your side. That time is running out and it is time, yea, even high time that we turn our attention to the Lord Jesus Christ. Clap your hands to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank the Lord. Second Thessalonians, well, first and second Thessalonians are some great prophetic reading. It's sown, it's filled with the coming of the Lord. I had a man come to me and tell me, he said, I don't believe in the rapture. I don't believe it's going to happen. He said, I've heard it all my life, and he's a young man. He said, I've heard it all my life, and I've never seen it. And I thought, you know, that's pretty crazy. The apostles thought back in their day they would live to see it. And here, you are a young man, and you expect that God's going to drop everything and perform this at your will. I will tell you, it's coming in God's time. But there is going to be a rapture, and there is going to be a time when the Spirit of the Lord gathers mankind back unto Himself. I will tell you, 2 Corinthians says, says this, and it says, Let no man deceive you. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Now, when you talk about the falling away, there, there has to be a falling away before that day comes. Now, I believe we've seen numerous fallings away. I, I believe uh, 9-11. I, I, remember, uh, I, I remember when being in church on 9-11 and how everybody thought it's happening. The Middle East is exploding in war and we've got to get to church. And I, I remember that it lasted for a couple of months. That we saw people that would come and they would turn to God. But what happened? They made peace with their place and they made peace with their time. I've got time to get it right and I've got time to turn back to God and perhaps things are not as bad as I thought they were and I have time. I remember when COVID hit and I remember the first week that we were on lockdown and I was on my knees, I was on my face and I was seeking the Lord and I was talking to God about it and I heard the voice of God and He said this to me, He said there are some dark days ahead. And I didn't know, I didn't have any more information than that. All I heard was there are dark days ahead. Uh, that could just mean, hey, you know, uh, we're not coming off daylight savings time. I'm, I know I'm being a little funny, but I don't know what dark days ahead meant. But I will tell you, for months, I, I sat there and repented every day. Repent, repent, repent. And, and I saw people when that said, you know what, you can't lock me out of the church. It's my God-given right to go to church. I, I heard that. And I heard people People say it. You know, you can't allow it. You can't tell me I can't go. And, you know, there's no way you can keep me out of it. But over the course of time, people made peace with not coming to the house of the Lord. Over the course of time, people said, you know what? It's not where I have to be, and I have time, and time is on my side. And I will tell you that anytime we sit there and we think that time is on our side, there is a spirit of deception that is at work in the earth. And I will tell you, it is now time, yea, even and high time to turn our hearts and our attention to the Lord Jesus Christ for the days are at hand when we are going to see the fulfilling of the prophecy in 2 Thessalonians. It says this now, it says, let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come except there be a falling away first. Well, interesting thing about that falling away. 
As I studied it out, that was translated from the words backward standing. And really what I think the Bible is talking about there is there's coming a day when the Spirit of God is going to stand backwards from the earth. When the time is going to hit the zero mark. And the Spirit of God is going to stand backward from the earth. And everything that is full of the Spirit of God. And everything that is repented. And everything that has been washed in the blood is going to recede off the earth with the Spirit of God. And when time comes to the end, when time gets to that zero mark, mark the earth is going to suffer the wrath of man the wrath of satan and the wrath of god and it's going to be a horrible time and the bible tells us in the book of revelation what to expect upon the earth at that time but i'm telling you that if you've got breath this morning if you've got somehow a desire in your heart for the things of god that in this moment of time you can turn your heart to jesus christ you can turn your desires to him you can worship him and you can come to god in a place of repentance and say God I'm here to serve you for whatever time I've got left I'm giving it to you praise God come on a little bit more worship God just a little bit more Paul wrote this to Timothy he said this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come for men shall be lovers of their own self, covetousness, covet, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are, are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. And, and then if you just read it down, it, it gets worse, but then he gets to verse 13. He says, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. I, I tell you today, there is a spirit of deception that is upon the earth. It has filled the hearts of men. Uh, as you look around and, and you understand the way of the governments are going and you understand that they are being pulled by loud voices that are really the spirit of Antichrist. Uh, a place where we can't understand what's a man and what's a woman anymore. Uh, when I was growing up you only had two choices and the choices were obvious. But I'll tell you the day and the age in which we live, uh, it is somehow that that spirit of deception has gone forth and, and a allowed people to see things in such an anti-Christ way. But I will tell you the same thing. It happened in the natural. has happened in the spirit. That somehow Satan has blinded us to the fact that time is running out. That we stand at the end of time. I am a man. I am born in the temporal. But I will tell you, this man that is born in the temporal and born in time is a spiritual being that is filled with the Spirit of God. And if I would ever get a revelation of who I am and declare the mighty things of God and allow them to be unleashed in this time that the power and demonstration of God would shake this world. I tell you today, if you're listening, if you're hearing the sound of my voice, it is time for you to speak the deep things of God into the earth. It is time for us to speak forth revival. It is time for us to pray like we've never prayed before. It is time for us to repent like we have never repented before. It is time for us to turn our heart and our mind to Jesus Christ with everything we have. Because let me tell you what happens. At the end of time, at the end of time, there won't be any warning. The day before won't feel different. Nobody's going to come to you and say, this is the last 24 hours, you better get it right. Nobody's going to do that. Jesus himself told us exactly what to expect. You can read Matthew chapter 24. It's one of the great prophetic chapters of the Bible, declaring the, the end from the beginning, what's going to happen. Jesus says this. He said, Therefore, be ye also ready, for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. He said, in that time, in that hour, he said, it's going to all be in time. And it's going to be just like the moment before. And it's going to be like the moment before that. But there's going to come an end of time. There's going to come an end 
to what's happening in the earth. All I can tell you today is what I feel. I feel like we are standing on a great precipice. I feel like the kingdom of God is closer than it's ever been before. But I tell you, that spirit of deception, that spirit of antichrist, that spirit of pulling away from the things of God has never been stronger than it is now. You know, when I grew up, and I, there was a reverence for God. Um, and I will tell you that reverence for God was far less than it was when my parents grew up. But almost anymore, there, there's a blatant irreverence for God. People think that God's going to have to accept them just the way they've decided to come. When we run out of time, when we get to that place where there is no more time, we're going to see ourselves as Jesus sees us. And we've got to make sure that in time, we have prepared to meet the King. Praise God. Why don't you just stand with me? If you're at home, I'm just going to invite you to find a place to pray. I'm going to invite you to find a place of repentance. And if you need to know more about the infilling of the Holy Ghost, if you need to know more about baptism in Jesus' name, you feel free to reach out to us on our Facebook page, and we will help you with that. God bless you at home. For the rest of us that are here today, I'm just going to ask you to use